The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Some Pharisees came and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So this one doesn't count for me, I guess, because it's only talking about men divorcing their wives. No, of course not. It's about, of course, what Jesus and his Pharisees are working out together. I mean, the Pharisees belong to God as well, remember. And they're not people necessarily who are trying to destroy the mission of God. We get this sense from the way that Jesus talks with the Pharisees that there's always an adversarial thing going on. That the Pharisees who are testing Jesus might not be in it for good reasons. But I actually think that the Pharisees who were the precursors of the rabbis that we have now were not in it for bad reasons when they're talking to Jesus. They're testing him about the law because the law really matters. Because the way that God taught Israel throughout history and the rules that were given to the people of Israel for how to be holy people and to be identified as God's people when there were a lot of people around them who were not behaving in holy ways were important. And the Pharisees are not asking Jesus these questions, remember, because they're trying to destroy Jesus' teaching. They're asking him these questions because they're good questions. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife, given that you are talking about love and loving your neighbor as yourself and loving God and obeying all the commandments? What do we do about this hard pastoral question that's probably coming up, where people are coming to us as the leaders of their religious group and saying, well, but, but there's this problem in my marriage, or there's this issue in my relationship, or my wife is not faithful, or my husband is abusive, or this, or that, or simply we are not living in the covenant as it was described here. We are not one flesh. How do we deal with this? In a society where people needed to follow the rules because that was their identity, this was a very important question. It's still an important question because even though we don't live under the law the same way that the people of Israel lived under the law, even though, for example, I could look at this and say, well, it's not about me. The rules have changed for me because I'm married to a woman. Nope, not really. Because the rules that Jesus is talking about are not about 
of course, the gender of the people involved, or the way that the ceremony was carried out, or the kind of things that the people in the relationship thought about it under the law. What Jesus is talking about when he says, Moses allowed a man to write that certificate of dismissal, which is a very hard way of putting it. Moses allowed that because of the hardness of your hearts. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. What Jesus is saying is God's inherent goodness and love is in us from creation. And we are made to be united with each other. I won't get into whether God made other things besides male and female. But the question here is not about the letter of the law that they're disputing. It's about hardness of heart. It's about how we approach each other, how we love each other. And there are times when our hardness of heart requires a special rule. A special rule like, yes, you can get a divorce. Because God does not want his creatures to be destroyed. God made us, and God loves us from the very beginning. And in the beginning, in that story about Adam and Eve, and about one or the other being made for each other, that story is not about romantic love. It's not like I was made for you because there's some sort of special feeling here. It's about a covenant. God made these people to be there for each other. And these people, therefore, obey God by loving each other. They are united not because they like it, not because they are anything other than creatures of God who were made to love. So there's two facets of this. There's both the difficult thing that, yes, when one is married or when one is in a covenant relationship, one has to obey God. And one has to seek the good of the other because that was what this type of relationship was created for. But in the case where one cannot, in the case where one cannot make that choice anymore, it is possible to divorce. But it makes a very difficult pastoral question. And that's the question that the rabbis bring to Jesus. They bring this question because it's something that's been going on in human relationships forever. How do we choose the good of the other? And how do we make ourselves safe if the other isn't choosing that for us? I guess sometimes, because of our hardness of heart, we have to make a choice that is less than optimal. And yes, the logic is, of course, if one is supposed to be married forever, and one divorces and marries another person, then one has broken the covenant. And yet, God always seeks ways for us to be better able to be in covenant with God. God always seeks us, even when we break the covenant. God always creates a way out of no way. God always makes a way for us to live. I think that all of our discussions about marriage and covenants and relationships should start with the question, are we being hard of heart? Or are we obeying God who made us for love? Children generally find this easier than we do. It's not about innocence. It's about not having spent enough time to become hard of heart. One of the things that I've been learning in the process of preparing to become a parent that has gone on for years and years now is that children attach to people based on how people react to them. It's not based on some inherent emotional attraction to that person. It's that that person meets their needs. That person chooses to care for them. That person treats them the way that God does. And they attach to that person. And then they are more willing to listen to that person, to trust that person, to sometimes obey that person, because that person has shown them that they care, that they will protect them, 
that they are worthy of trust. Those of you who are parents have seen this happen. And we have seen what happens when it doesn't. A child finds it very hard to love in that way, to trust in that way, if the parent is not trustworthy. So our relationships should emulate the way God is in relationships, that God is always seeking us, that always, God is always providing for us, that God is always protecting us, and yes, even when we fail in our covenant relationships, God is always willing to take us in and give us another chance to learn. The brokenness of the world reflects how we break covenants. The difficulties in families reflects that, but it's not without healing possibilities. I'm going to ask you today, as you think about these difficult questions and how one would enter the kingdom of God as a child, to soften your hearts, to take up a spiritual practice of softening, because relationships require that. Relationships in covenant require that. I'm a difficult person sometimes because I have lots of ideas and opinions and I want to fight about them all the time. But I think when I remember to be softer of heart, I am able to have better outcomes. Children respond to that. And we as children of the Heavenly Father, as children of a loving parent, can respond that way to God as well. There is a spiritual practice called loving kindness meditation, and you can do it yourself any time of day. All it requires is that you take a moment to focus, even if your thoughts intrude, to gently focus on Jesus, to breathe, and then to think about a person for whom you wish to offer loving kindness. It could be yourself. It could be a person you're having trouble with. It could be a person that you're not having any trouble with. It could be your child. Simply offer that person loving kindness and feel what your heart feels. Feel how it softens toward that person. The Pharisees are focusing on the practical. They're focusing on the intellectual. They're focusing on the rules because that is so much easier than softening their hearts. Jesus invites us to soften our hearts not because the rules don't matter, but because we can apply them so much better when we are operating from a perspective of humble obedience to God. So let us soften our hearts this week and as we go forward in our faith journey. Let us not worry so much about how to apply the rules, but how they live, how they live in our hearts. God made us, God made us so that we would be able to do this. God gives us rules and gives us ways of coming back when we fail. And if we trust God the way that children who are attached trust their parents, our hearts will soften. Our stress will get less. Our relationships will get better, even in these hard questions. <laughs>